guys, welcome to Snippet Sunday. The intention of Snippet Sunday is to give you a little bit of insight into what might be coming up with Dan Hellesfe Cricket, what might be in store in terms of things that are going to go on, but then also some little insights into what I have in my kit bag, what I'm looking at doing and stuff like that. And then this week, we're going to have a little look at a little kit hack that I have. So I have a few things that are fairly generic things that you can get in most places that are fairly cheap that I use towards my coaching. And the one we're going to talk about today are dice. Now I've got quite a few of these and I use these loads within coaching sessions as they're a great thing that we can use to randomise our practice. Because the nature of the variability of the when you roll the dice no one really knows what's going to come out. So you can create some really funky activities and challenges and scenarios off the back of that. And I want to give you a little insight into three of the kind of games and activities that I use when using these dice. So the first one that I do is a net-based scenario that I actually stole from Gary Kirsten. So a couple of years back, Gary came and ran one of his cricket academies at Millfield. I was very lucky to be able to coach on that and saw this game for the first time. You effectively need five dice. You roll the first two die, and that's how many runs the batter are going to need to, the batters are going to need to score. So that's come up as 41. The next two dice are for how many balls the, bat, the batting team have to get their target. So they need to get 41 runs in 43 balls. And then the last one is how many wickets they've got to achieve that. So they've got three wickets if this was to be a scenario. So 41 runs or 43 balls with three wickets remaining. Now, as you can imagine, you can create some really extreme scenarios with this, but also some really random ones that will develop some tactical stuff that not only batters and bowlers can utilise, but then you can start to get into some real deal t detail, sorry, around field placings and things like that, if you were to go out and do that in a middle practice, for example. We've used this quite a lot with bowlers within specific scenarios, and it's been able to develop some really good things around their thinking of what their problem solving is looking to be. So that's the first one. The second one that I do is just a bowler's target practice game. So setting up six targets effectively, and then you roll the dice, and each one of those targets is associated to one of those numbers. That number then gives you what you're going to aim for. It completely randomises your practice and it also makes sure that you're able to jump between your skills like you might need to. If you're bowling the last over in a, a T20, you've got to be able to execute a wide Yorker, a bumper, a slower ball into this length, be able to bowl a left-hander and bowl a wide Yorker, a straight Yorker, all of these different things. So you can effectively pick six different balls, write them up on a board with a number, associate them to it, and then get stuck in from there. So again, that creates some real nice variability and randomization within that bowler's practice session. The last one that I use with bowlers is one where you haven't got a batter, but you wanna be able to create a bit of pressure. So we go with some bowling figures. So you put yourself out of target. So say for example, you're looking for a bowler to hold their length. So we'd put out a six to eight meter target, for example, for one of our more top end bowlers. Every time they land the ball inside that six to eight meter area, you roll two dice. If they come up with a double, so say they got double four, we'll record that as a wicket. If they don't get a double, it just goes down as a dot ball. If they miss their target area, so they're too full or too short of the target, you then just roll the one and whatever number comes up, is how many runs that ball goes for. So it could come up as a two, for example, and then depending upon the line and length, you can then start to discuss where that's probably going to have gone and build a bit of a wagon wheel off the back of that as well. So you can create some really nice pressure off the back of that. And the nature of the target, you can adjust for the players that are in front of you. So if I'm working with youngsters that are relatively new to bowling, I could put out a bigger target if you're working with someone top end that wants to be really specific about a couple of things that they're looking to achieve, then you could make the target a lot narrower 
and you can get really funky with this as an activity. So I think these things, really cheap. You can nick them off of your family board games. That's probably where I've accumulated most of mine. You can buy them in shops for relatively cheap as well. And I think die are a fantastic thing to have in your coaching kit bag to be able to randomise practice. I hope this was helpful, guys. Make sure you give us a like uh, on Twitter and Instagram and feel free to subscribe to the YouTube channel.